Hey everyone, welcome to Boondock Dwayne's RV Show. In this video, I'm going to be talking about leveling and stabilization of your uh, travel trailer. If you have a self-leveling system, this video is really not for you. This is for all the manual stuff. Uh, I'm going to go over some products and some things I do and use, and hopefully this will help you out. Uh, and I give you enough information to make it very worthwhile. So the first thing I want to go over is the products. Um, the products are basically you're going to need uh, wheel chocks. I prefer these big rubber heavy duty uh, uh, wheel chocks with the big eye bolt. You can get them on Amazon like this uh, picture I've shown, you can get them at Harbor Freight. There's many, many places you can get them. I prefer these and I carry four of these. The next thing for my tandem axle trailer is X chocks. The X chocks keep your trailer from rocking back and forth, even though you're using your stabilizers. These uh, really lock in your trailer from, from that movement. Um, and, and they really, really work. This is just the ones I prefer, the Mahler Gates. They have a little lock that you can put on them, uh, which just makes it more of a pain in the butt for a thief to try to take them. This is kind of what my setup looks like uh, when I'm all leveled and locked in. Um, next, I want to talk about actual leveling devices. Levelmate Pro seems to be the, the most popular one. I had one. This is the Levelmate Pro, and it has a little lithium battery. I believe it's a 2032 battery. Uh, uh, the problem is my battery was dead all the time. Uh, I had connection problems. That was with one of the first series one many years ago. Uh, I fixed mine where I never had the battery problem again. This is a product you can get on Amazon for your Levelmate Pro uh, to remove that battery. It is a step down uh, a little power module, three volts, three amps. 12 volt, you hook uh, your supply side onto your 12 volt system, and then the other side, you pop that battery and you solder on the negative and positive, um, and you just drill two little holes in the side of the plastic case when you pull it apart, and you have power all the time. Now, the new Levelmate Pro Plus uh, has the micro USB, and you can plug it in, and you always have power that way. I just learned that it was more of a pain in the backside to use one of these. I, over the years, I just prefer a standard bubble level. Uh, they work, they work every time, and they work really, really fast. You pull into your campsite, uh, you get a, you need to get your X, Y uh, uh, of your trailer leveled. I always do the Y first, the side to side, to see if I need to level my trailer. With that in mind, Next, we'll show you some products. The products I use are the Camco leveling blocks, the yellow square leveling blocks. I carry 20 of those. And my actual leveling device to level the trailer is the Camco um, curved leveling, I call them wedges, the curved uh, leveling wedges or chocks. Um, here they are right here. You can get them on Amazon. You can get them online almost anywhere. These are what I've used for many, many years. Three trailers now. Uh, they seem to last longest. There are a bunch of different brands. Uh, everyone has their preference. I have found these with their... I'll get a good shot of the little rubber mat. These have just lasted me the longest. Um, I had the, the other brand... Uh, I had a rubber mat. I tore up the rubber mat all the time, trying to roll up on them. Um, so I found these, and they work every time. So I, I carry 20 of the yellow square Camco leveling blocks. I carry two of the curved leveling wedges. And I also carry, you can see the plywood uh, squares there. That is 8.5 by 8.5 square, 1 inch thick plywood. And the reason I, I carry those is uh, the little offsets, you know, squares for stacking on the Camco blocks sometimes don't give you the most level surface. So uh, I can always uh, put one of my square wooden blocks on there and it works great. No problem. Those are my standard stabilizing devices. So it's pretty much um, the main thing to remember 
is your stabilizers, and we'll go back to the picture, your stabilizers are not designed to lift your trailer. You're certainly not going to, you're certainly not going to change a spare tire with your stabilizer. If you attempt to do this, you're going to end up uh, pretty much destroying them. Uh, that Acme thread is just not made for lifting that kind of weight. And the, the metal involved in these, um, these are our uh, Intech ones. Uh, that are on the Terra Oasis and the Terra uh, Oasis Rover uh, version. I like these because they have a nice stop plate uh, right there at the the hex for the Acme bolt. Um, our Airstream, you can pull up a picture of that too. Our Airstream, uh, the Airstream had this long bolt that stuck out. Actually, tore, I've torn a pair of pants on it. Uh, it kind of sticks out. And it's not supported at the end like the others. So our, if you have the Intec Terra Oasis, um, it comes with a great set of stabilizers. Uh, and uh, I've never had any problems. I've never broke any. Uh, we'll get to the stabilizers next. So pretty much, you're checking your trailer. You, you pull into your site. You want to make sure you're level uh, first. And if you're not... Um, that's where the, the leveling wedges come into play. I got some great pictures for that. You simply put them behind each wheel and you back up and do a couple of checks. Make sure you're level. Once you're level, you can put in the gray part of it is the actual chalk to lock it in. Once you're level, uh, then you can put on at least on one side. Make sure you get your rubber chocks on. Um, then you can unhook your trailer. And once you've unhooked your trailer and you're totally level, that's when you use your stabilizers. I do not use an impact gun. It's loud and it creates too much friction and too much hammer on your Acme threats. Great way to strip them. Uh, and also your neighbors uh, totally appreciate a quiet screw gun. I have a 20 volt, uh, um, the lithium 20 volt screw gun, and it's more than enough to put enough pressure on my stabilizer jacks to... Uh, support the trailer. Once I've done all that, that's when with my Dexter axles, I've always kind of thought about the Dexter torsion uh, axles have rubber rods that are in them. I wait to put on my X chocks. I wait until I'm already uh, level, blocked in, tr trucks unhooked in a way. That's when I put on those uh, X chocks and I crank them down pretty tight. That keeps the movement forward to back from happening, walking in and, you know, up and down your trailer. Um, someone's trying to sleep. My wife's trying to sleep. Susan's trying to sleep. And I get up and walk around, go to the kitchen, and uh, the trailer shakes. Well, it doesn't happen at all with uh, x chocks applied properly. So there's a, a lot of different products out there. The main thing I wanted to, to show is this is not a good way to jack up your trailer. I don't even know how that guy got that up there. Uh, but that is not the way you want to do it. You want to do it like this. And uh, that's pretty stable. Um, I don't like this particular picture because they don't, they don't have the actual gray uh, wedge chalk in there. But this is the proper way to do that. Um, I also have some different size leveling uh, blocks, wooden for my tongue jack. Uh, you can... See, most of the time in most state parks, most of the campgrounds, RV parks, a lot of them are sloped to the back so water drains off and you'll find your, your, your tongue is so low. Um, that's why you want all these leveling blocks on your jacks. You don't want to have to put your stabilizer uh, jacks uh, all the way out and um, ex use that whole length of that Acme thread. It just puts more pressure on it. I generally always use four blocks per stabilizer and that work with one of my wooden blocks and that works great. Now, in the beginning, this is how I did it. And in many situations, trying to drive up on these plastic blocks, I've just pushed them. I've ground them into the pavement. Uh, uh, in the dirt, I've just kicked them right out. So I went to the curved leveling blocks, and I've never had a problem. Another thing I want to say is I don't think I've ever, ever in my life 
I can't recall, even with my father in our first Airstream uh, International 33, the first one, I don't ever recall having to, to level both sides of the trailer. Uh, you're always able to do it with one, and that's great because you're relying on you're relying on the the wedge here and that chuck to stabilize your trailer along with the X chucks. But if, if you're having to go up on these, if you're having to go up in the air for any amount, um, how are you going to use a wheel chuck? Which is that's always stuck in my mind. Well, how would I use a wheel chuck over there? That's why you make sure you have have your wheels chalked on the other side. Again, I've never had a situation where I had to jack up both sides of the trailer. One is all you need, and make sure you have your chocks on. Uh, I, I, again, also your your tongue jack is the thing that's made for lifting your trailer, uh, not your stabilizers. I don't know how many times uh, in our in our Facebook group. Oh, look at my stabilizer jack. I broke it. I'm stuck now. And you have to unbolt it to get out of there, jack up your trailer. Uh, so again, I don't use an impact gun on my on my stabilizer jacks. Uh, I use a screw gun. Um, if your screw gun's not super powerful, you can always get your you can always get your stabilizer jacks down and then put on, you know, a full turn with a wrench, a uh, three quarter inch wrench. Um, I happen to like our Intex stabilizer jacks. There's been some people who said, oh, these are cheap. These are cheap. These are cheap. Well, are basically the same thing on our Airstream, except they don't have that front uh, brace at the hex um, and support that shaft all the way. I've actually torn my pants on the Airstream um, like this. So this is, uh, I don't recommend this right here. Um, I, again, I don't like to overextend my stabilizer jacks more than three quarters. Um, and that's my advice there. Also for your tongue jack, there's all these pretty products. This particular product goes against my security methods. Um, I don't want anyone to see that my chains are right there hanging for you to use them to lash to your um uh, vehicle to steal my trailer. So I just use the good old cheap Camco. It's uh, it's uh, basically waterproof and uh, it works great. I think I have a picture. There it is. Here it is on my trailer right here. So uh, there's lots of different products out there for that. Another thing I want to touch on is my, my LCI Lippert 3,500 pound uh, power jack. Uh, the way it's positioned on our short, short tongue space, I can't put my tailgate down. So that quick hack, and I've made a video, is you simply um, pull the two bolts on either side, and you can rotate this around backwards. And then you can actually use your Ford, F, my Ford F-150 or 250, and put the tailgate down while you're hooked to the trailer. So, so we've gone over the products. You've got to have some good standard. I like the big rubber uh, wheel chocks. You're going to need X chocks uh, to stabilize your trailer from front to back movement, some type of leveling device. And uh, again, I prefer just a level. I can level my trailer twice as fast than I ever could with one of the electronic devices. You, you have your quiver of your products for, for leveling. And that, that's, I, again, I, 20 of the Camco yellow blocks and two, uh, two of the curve, Camco curve levelers, and they come with the gray uh, uh, stop chalk. And I have 12 of the 8.5 by 8.5 by 1 inch thick plywood boards. Um, end up using those all over the place. And uh, I've, never, I've never had a situation where I've had to level both sides of the trailer, ever. Um, you will find that you have your tongue so low sometimes to get level, it's almost humorous. Um, I've actually had to use no blocks and uh, <laughs> literally no blocks. I can tell you, Dinky Creek, California, man, the, the way those things, spaces are graded, uh, you just don't think you're going to get low enough. So uh, these are the products I, I carry, and I never do something like this. I don't even know how you do this. Again, I just don't know how you do it. So I hope this video was helpful. The main thing is your stabilizer jacks 
are for stabilizing. Once you're already level and your trailer's locked in and you've pulled your vehicle away, tow vehicle, that's when you hit your stabilizers. And um, if you're going to lift your trailer up and down, don't do it with these. Do it with your tongue jack because that's what it's made for. Uh, I think I've covered all the bases here. Uh, here's mine all hooked up. Uh, and I talked about I worry about my Dexter Axles torsion bar. I always put my X chocks on after I'm all done with my other process. And that's leveling, um, uh, wheel chocking, um, pulling the truck away, stabilizer jacks down, and uh, then I put on my X chocks. Um, I hope I've covered everything. Uh, kind of got it's hard to use on do all this and products and all of that. But I hope I was uh, sub, uh, gave you enough information. Please subscribe to my channel if you like my videos. Please hit the notification. Everyone be safe out there and take care.